All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event. So please welcome back, preaching to you once again in the space he helped create. Give it up for Pastor Steve Bra. Thank you, John. Not sure I've ever had that song as an intro before, but it is good to be back. Um, uh, it is good to be back in this space. Like I said, it was um, on June 29th in uh, 2011 that I uh, drove back from Davenport after we had already done the move and came back for uh, the last uh, ignition service of, uh, of my tenure here. And um, one of the things, like I said, if you feel like painting the walls over, paint the walls over. Um, and I told that the same thing to, uh, to Christina and Rebecca and all the people that followed was that if you, you know, ignition was ignition. And if you need to change the name, change the name, styles, change the style, um, because that really was uh, who I was. And um, you've allowed me to, to be and do the proving ground for a lot of uh, my ministry. This is uh, the first of now three theaters that I have built in uh, three different churches. So uh, it is good to, uh, uh, to be back in this place. And I'm going to preach on a scripture that I have talked about before because it's important to me uh, as part of my ministry is, is the passing of, of that mantle, passing of, of what it means. And um, so what I want to talk to you tonight has a lot to do with that, um, has a lot to do with what uh, my hope and dream for not just uh, First United Methodist Church of Cedar Falls, uh, but of United Methodist Church, of those who have um, walked with me, uh, whether that would be around Iowa, Georgia, or, or England, or uh, the Holy Lands, um, but that you take what God has given you and continue to move that. So tonight's scripture comes from um, the Gospel of Luke in the third chapter, and it comes in that section right before um, Jesus is baptized. And uh, John the Baptist is down at the River Jordan, and he's been down there baptizing people uh, for quite a while now. And the word has gotten out that there's this cool new thing happening down at the Jordan River. And people are starting to flock down there because they want to be a part of the new in religious thing. You may have, you may have seen that. You may have been a part of that. You may have experienced that and in, in witnessed it in another church when things are going so well, so cool, that people flock there just because they've heard about how cool it is or how great it is. And that's the way it was with John because they were coming a long ways. When John was baptizing them in the Jordan River, it was in a site just uh, uh, a couple miles from the city of Jericho, uh, just north of the Dead Sea in a very desolate area um, right before the Jordan River um, goes into uh, the Dead Sea. And uh, you can visit there now. I was just there uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, Chris and Lisa were with me on that, uh, that trip, and we got to experience what that, that spot looks like. But these people that were coming were coming all the way from Jerusalem, which is like 15 miles, 20 miles down through a, a horrible gorge dropping all the way down there. But they were coming because this was what everybody was talking about. If you were going to be anybody doing anything in the new experience, you needed to go see this guy called John and listen to what he had to say and listen to, and have him baptize you, which in that era was just a renewal or a washing of a, a, a ceremony that made you new and right with God. And so they were flocking there, tax collectors, soldiers, everyday people were coming down there to be a part of that event, part of that unique experience. And John had a tendency to chew them out a little bit because he realized that their hearts really weren't in the right place that they really weren't there for a, a spiritual renewal. They really weren't there to witness and experience what it is that God had planned for them. And that's where we find our, our scripture today. And I'm reading this from the message um, because uh, to me that, that, well, it's the one that fits with this room. So hear these words from the Gospel of Luke uh, from the paraphrase of the message. When the crowds of people came out for baptism because they, it was the popular thing to do. John exploded. You brood of snakes, what do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? 
You think a little water on your snakeskin is going to deflect God's judgment? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a child of Abraham is neither here nor there. Children of Abraham are a dime a dozen. God can make children from stones if he wants. But what counts is your life. It is green and blossoming because it is dead wood. It goes on the fire. And the crowd asked him, then what are we supposed to do? Well, he said, if you have two coats, give one away. Do the same with your food. The tax men who came to be baptized and said, teacher, what should we do? He told them, no more extortion. Collect only what is required of the law. The soldiers asked him, and what should we do? And he told them, no shakedowns, no blackmail, and be content with your job. The interest of the people by now was building, and they were coming, all beginning to wonder, could this John be the Messiah? Could this be the number one guy? And John tell them, I'm baptizing you here in the water. The main character in this drama, to whom I am a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life of fire, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He is going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything, in, everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. There was a lot more of this. Words that gave strength to the people, words that put heart, put that words that put heart in them, the message. That's good enough, Chris. Thank you. So tonight, I want to share with you what it is that God has put upon my heart as, as that mere stagehand um, to ignite a fire, to be a part of God's plan of igniting your life and your soul. So let us pray. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon me and upon these that are gathered here tonight, that you may allow us to feel your presence, me experience your grace, understand your love, and embrace our mission and our calling. Lord, I ask this in your precious name. Amen. So the task that we were given um, for this service, and I know that uh, Steve Williams talked about it last week, is to preach this as if it's our last time to preach before you. And like I said, I thought I'd probably preach that last sermon nine years ago. And that, uh, because it is very unusual for, for pastors to be called back to preach at another, at a previous church. A lot of times we get called to preach uh, at somebody else's church. Um, as a certified evangelist, I get called sometimes to preach at a lot of other churches to do things with, with youth ministry and youth conferences. But this scripture, this one that I've used that was part of what was the beginning of this place. The word ignition came out of the song, both um, ignition from uh, Toby Mac, but also this scripture about the fact that Jesus is to ignite our hearts. And that needs that we need to have a place where we can experience God's love and grace and allow the Holy Spirit to move us into new places. But the part I want you to hear tonight is that we're just stagehands. If there's something about a stagehand that I want you to hear is that a stagehand hands it off to the next stagehand that hands it off to the next stagehand. That after I left, I handed it off to Christina, who handed it off to Rebecca, who's handed it off, that's handed it off, now all the way down that this service has been handed off to John. And we are God's stagehand. God is calling you to be a stagehand. God is calling you to bring about God's ignition in this world, to bring about something that will change not only this place, but your lives and the lives around you. Those people that we we read in the scripture that they were coming all the way from Jerusalem, they were coming because there was something missing in their lives, and they thought deep down there was going to be something that they could find, something that was going to happen, something they could experience at that place on the Jordan River. They'd heard great things about this man called John, And they thought, maybe he's the Messiah. Maybe he can change my life. Maybe he can fix it so that everything is going to be okay. That's a lot of times why people come to a church. Why they show up at a fusion. 
or a traditional service or a contemporary service. They show up because they're looking for a lifeline to drag them someplace better than they are, to allow their lives to be in such a way that they can be changed forever. They can be a new and better person. That is everybody's dream at some point in time when they walk through the doors of a church. But my challenge for you tonight is to be that stagehand that throws that lifeline out. Because if we wait for people to come through the doors, we're going to be waiting a long time. We need to be part of that group that goes out with the intention of sharing God's good news with those around us. Part of my ongoing ministry for the last 25 years, before I even got here, was the fact that everybody needs to learn how to give their testimony and needs to be able to give their testimony at the drop of a hat. And there are several people here that can testify the fact that I made them do that. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to any of you here tonight now, but think about that. What would you say to a coworker? If they, threw, if they were asking for a lifeline, if they were looking for a way to be helped, would you be able to tell them, you should come to church with me? You should come and hear the message. We have got a stagehand by the name of Matt or by the name of Scott that is going to tell you some things or by the name of John that's going to share something with you that is going to give you a hand up. It's going to give you a movement forward. Can you, can you take a time when you can think that you could share something in your life when somebody made a difference, when some stagehand somewhere said something to you that made you want to be more alive, more active, wanted to share what you had with somebody else? Now, this is not going to be my last sermon, but it is pretty much the same sermon I preach almost every week based on some scripture or another, that God is calling each and every one of you to do something special. I know, I know for a fact, I have been with enough, uh, starting off in youth ministry 30 years ago and working my way up now to uh, what we call big people church. Um, God has a calling for each and every one of you. I've seen it. I've seen it in this church. I've seen it from junior high students that are now in ministry. I've seen it in adults who had another calling and are now in ministry. I've seen it in lay leaders who have gone around the world doing good in mission and ministry. So I know if you may be sitting there right now saying, no, God doesn't have a calling for me. You're wrong. God does. You need to throw that lifeline out there as you struggle so God can reel you in so that you can find what it is that God is calling you to do. Because once you find that, your life will never be the same. If that's when you need to uh, hang on, because the dream, the life, the world around you is going to increase in speed and in intensity. The colors are going to get brighter. The sun is going to shine more. And your life is not going to be free of worries other than maybe how in the world am I going to serve God even more? So one of the things that uh, when Matt asked me this um, was, is there a, um, a, a reflection song? And I thought, I don't do reflection songs. <laughs> but, uh, um, those of you that know Ignition was, Ignition was not a whole lot about reflection. It was more about uh, energy. And um, so I, I looked through my list of songs and uh, um, the song that I came up with, and, it, and you may have figured it out from listening to the uh, sermon is called Lifeline by uh, Papa Roach, and uh, it literally is a story of a of a man seeking um, God's redemption, seeking God's lifeline to make their life better. So at this time, um, we'll I'll turn it over to the the music masters to uh, to put the to put the music up, and uh, feel free to sing along. If you want to stand up and jump up and down, you can. Otherwise, I also understand if you want to just sit still. Somebody who needs the love of Christ that you can share with them? Or are you that person who's looking for Jesus 
tonight. So I'd ask you to talk to Matt, to talk to Scott, to talk to them about what it is that you can do to be that lifeline so that First Church can be that lifeline to the Cedar Valley so that you may ignite, be part of the stagehand that ignites the Holy Spirit, a fire within to change you from the inside out. So let us pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for allowing, us to be, for allowing me to be here tonight, for your spirit to wash over me and over these, your people. Lord, I just ask that you may continue to allow us to do your will, to seek your discernment, to open ourselves to your spirit, to your fire, to go and do and to be what it is you've called us to be. Lord, I thank you and praise you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pastor Steve Brock. Thank you. And as you go forth this week, I hope you take uh, Pastor Steve's message with you. And that that is that church can't just be something you do in your life. Church needs to be what you're doing with your life. You're all equipped with so many special talents and gifts that God has specifically given to you to further his ministry and to further be a light in this world. So take those gifts and figure out ways that you can use them to go out into this world and outside of these walls and be a lifeline for another person to bring them in, make them part of this body of Christ so we can keep building this kingdom and continue to make things as good as we can possibly make them. Have a great week. And whatever you do, please be Christ for one another. Have a great weekend.